Hey guys, my name is Duncan and welcome back to War Thunder. So, today we are talking about a BF 109G22 with Graham. So, Graham, can you tell us about BF 109G22? And its own history and tips for playing games at War Thunder. Of course. Sure. Okay. It was one of the first truly modern fighters of the area, including such features as all metal monocoque construction a closed canopy, a retractable landing gear, and was powered by a liquid-cooled, inverted V-12 aero engine. The BF-109 first saw operational service during the Spanish Civil War and was still in service at the dawn of the jet age at the end of World War II, during which time it was the backbone of the Luftwaffe's fighter force. From the end of 1941 the BF-109 was supplemented by the Fock Wolf FW-190, Originally conceived as an interceptor, later models were developed to fulfill multiple tasks, serving as bomber escort, fighter bomber, day, night, all-weather fighter, ground attack aircraft, and as reconnaissance aircraft. It was supplied to and operated by several states during World War II, and served with several countries for many years after the war. The BF-109 was the most produced fighter aircraft in history with a total of 33,984 units produced from 1936 up to April 1945. The BF-109 was flown by the three top-scoring German fighter aces of World War II, who claimed 928 victories among them while flying with Jag Schwader 52, mainly on the Eastern Front, as well as by Hans Jochai Marsili, the highest-scoring German ace in the North African campaign. It was also flown by several other aces from Germany's allies, notably Finnil Marijuta Lehmann, the highest scoring non-German ace, and pilots from Italy, Romania, Croatia, Bulgaria and Hungary. Through constant development, the BF-109 remained competitive with the latest Allied fighter aircraft hunt. Till the end of the war. The BF.109G Gustave was the most mass-produced variant of the 109, powered by the Daimler-Benz DB605. The 605 was basically a DB601 with the cylinder block redesigned to increase displacement from 33.9 to 35.7 litres, which resulted in 175 extra HP for no significant change in size. The Gustave also received improved armament. Instead of the previously standard 7.62 mm mg 17 machine guns, 13 mm mg 131 heavy machine guns were used. The heavier guns lead to distinct cowling bulges, needed to cover the breech blocks on the new guns. However, the increased equipment led to heavier weight on the Gustave, in fact 10% heavier than the Friedrich. Compared to the much earlier BF.109B, the Gustave was almost 46% heavier. The new aircraft had begun to reach frontline units by May 1942. In essence, the BF.109 design had reached its peak and would ideally need to be replaced with newer, more modern designs. However, the troubled ME.109 replacement was still in development and things at the front were beginning to look ominous for Germany. Consequently, the RLM decided to continue to further refine the 109. The BF.109G2 slash trope variant was built for use in tropical regions. It was unique due to its aerial fill tube, hydraulic seals and protective covers. In addition, an umbrella was extendable over the cockpit to help keep the pilot from overheating when on the ground. The plane was equipped with a special emergency kit including a gun for self-defense and a supply of food and water. Thanks Graham, and what about the tips? Okay. Combat usage and tactics. The BF-109 G2 fulfills many roles in War Thunder. It can be used as a bomber interceptor and as a fighter bomber, but where it really shines is the role as a pure fighter. The G2 should be flown like every 109 in an energy fighting style. 
The best climbing speed for the G2 is 230 km per hour, yes, alternative 270 km per hour, yes, to pull of emergency maneuvers faster, and you should climb from the start with WEP enabled to gain altitude quickly. In a dive red lining starts at 750 km per hour, yes, and your aircraft breaks apart around 820 km per hour, yes, until you reach this speed you cannot rip your wings off with pulling up. You have access to 20 slash 30 slash 45 minutes of fuel, for most maps 30 minutes of fuel is a good choice. Bomber Interceptor. When facing any bombers, for example B-25, B-17, Wellington, Year 2, one should never simply stay behind them and spray the guns all over the bomber. To take out any bomber effectively, the best tactic is to come in with high speed out of a steep angle and focus the guns on just one wing. This will give the bomber's gunners a harder time to ward off the attacker, whilst focusing on only one wing increases greatly the chance of a critical hit, either snapping off a wing or making the bomber uncontrollable. Since bombers are typically much slower and much less maneuverable than fighters, the performance drop of mounting underwing cannon pods is insignificant, so the 2 mg 151 gun pods are of course recommended to shoot down bombers faster, since most bombers are much more resistant to hits than the average fighter. Fighter Bomber To fulfill this role one has the choice between one 250 kg or 450 kg bombs. In most situations the 250 kg bomb is the way to go, simply because the damage radius is bigger and therefore the bomb is easier to hit. To take out any hard ground target E.G. tanks pillboxes with the 50 kg bombs, a direct hit is necessary. The only advantage of the 50 kg bombs is that one can drop two at a time and therefore bomb two separated ground targets. To take out any hard ground target, for example tanks, pillboxes with the 50 kg bombs, a direct hit is necessary. The only advantage of the 50 kg bombs is that one can drop two at a time and therefore bomb two separated ground targets. Thanks Graham for coming to the show. This is the end of our video here. If you like it, just like it and always, danke, see ya und auf Wiedersehen.